Hi, welcome back to Christy Grace Scarlet Pen. I am talking today about a fun challenge I gave myself, which was reading royal romances. I found for some reason that I had ended up collecting a bunch of royal romances and I didn't know why. I, so I decided to get through them all by making it a video, making it a blog post and having some fun with it. So we did that. Excuse if you hear in the background, my washing machine is on. You're welcome. Okay, so the first book that I'm going to talk about that I read for my Royal Romances, I only bought this book because of <laughs> the book itself, and it was American Royals, and it's by Catherine McGee. I had heard about this book, but I bought it specifically because the pink on the on the edges. I, I saw it, and I'd gotten it. I think I showed it in another video, and I actually did end up finding it for the first time. Um, I had heard briefly and vaguely of it, uh, but I hadn't really read it too much, and so... I got and read The American Royals as part of this uh, challenge to read royal romances. I rated this 3.5 stars. I liked it, but I remember there was just way, way, way too many plots and characters to follow. There was so much happening and <laughs> you couldn't really tell what a main plot was. There was just a hundred different subplots and that was that. I'm a plot girl, I like a good plot, and I am not a character-driven story person, so this for me was a little bit frustrating, but 3.5 stars is nothing to sneeze at. I still really did enjoy it. It is set in sort of this fantasy world where the Americans also had a royal family, a monarchy, rather than the system that they have now. And we sort of follow the American royal teenagers. So it is like a young adult, like a teenage book. Um, and so we follow sort of these teenagers as they're sort of trying to get, you know, they do their love lives and they have their own life in, as these royals and, and sort of trying to sort of find where they're supposed to fit in this in this world and in this space there is oh my gosh so even though the characters were really engaging and I really did quite like the overall book itself there was a lot of I can't be with you because of family expectations and I'm miserable because of it and I'm like the angst I'm like okay come on like we're either going to be together or you're just going to have to give up that person like make a choice like I don't why are we going through the angst? It's so unnecessary. Anyways, whatever. That is a personal like thing where I'm just like, communicate properly. And if you really, really can't be together, then don't be upset about it. Just move on with your life. Um, <laughs> can really only do that in a book because realistically life is complicated. Relationships are complicated. I get it. And it's really difficult to let people go, uh, especially if you had a lot of serious feelings for them. But shouldn't be developing those feelings if you know that that's not possible. And if you end up with those feelings anyway, you can make a choice to abdicate. I'm sorry, but that's a legit thing. You can abdicate. You can choose to like leave and be with that person. Just look at Mexit. Like, I... <laughs> That's a thing. Anyway, whatever. So I, it was frustrating for me where I'm like, majority of these relationships are, I want to be with you because I have feelings for you, but we can't be together because of expectations or because of all these other external reasons. And that's why we're having this angsty like situation. And I just, ugh, drives me crazy. But overall, like I said, I did really enjoy it. I liked the characters. I liked the book. You know, it was 3.5 stars is a good rating for me. So you know what? Yeah, it was, um, it was pretty good read. The next book that I read as part of the series was Once Upon a Prince by Rachel Houck. I actually have two books of hers in this collection because apparently she likes writing royal romances. I liked this book. It was three stars for me. Um, it is essentially like The Prince and Me, you know, normal person meets a prince, they fall in love and they're probably going to get like they're going to get together, but then like their whole life is going to change because they're used to being a normal person, blah, blah, blah. Like, super predictable, but it was still really enjoyable. I actually really liked in this book that it was not an insta love. I hate insta love, drives me absolutely crazy. Um, it was an insta love between, you know, these two characters. It was over a actual normal considerable amount of time that their relationship grew and, and changed and developed. I actually really enjoyed that. I thought that was really quite good. I really, really enjoyed our main character, Susanna. She was really quite relatable, um, you know, pretty down to earth, a little bit manic pixie dream girl, a little, a little, a little, a little, but I actually kind of dug it. I liked it. I was like, Nah, I'm here for it. The only thing that I really got frustrated by as well was we had this crazy, almost homeless lady who was spiritually, you know, in tune. Technically, um, Rachel Hauk is a Christian author, but she made the only spiritually connected person look like a crazy loon. And I didn't appreciate that. It was totally, by the way, um, inaccurate. Now, <laughs> We are not all crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Apart from that, there was nice fa faith themes that were spread throughout. So it was a pretty solid read, relatively average, but on a good scale. So I gave it three stars. I quite, li I quite liked it. Um, but yeah, that's where that one was at. 
Uh, the next book that I read uh, was by another author. Uh, we'll get back to the second Rachel Howe book in a minute, but this one was To Win a Prince by Tony Shiloh. I really, really enjoyed this book a lot. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect for this book. It was a really great read. We are essentially following um, a, a, a prince in Africa. So it was a little bit of uh, a different um, situation for me. I hadn't really read uh, a book where the characters were from Africa. I loved this. It was so much fun. <laughs> It was so much fun! But uh, we did have this sort of uh, royal prince person whose title was taken away from him because he was doing a bit of a dodgy stuff uh, and embarrassed everybody. And so he's trying to sort of acclimate to life when he doesn't have this, um, you know, this uh, title uh, while hoping to get it back, hoping to get back the respect of his, you know, his father and everybody in the community. Um, while we also follow our other main character who is trying to break into the fashion industry um, over there and she's from America. I think this is technically book two in a series and the first series follows the woman who became the queen. The main, the guy main character in this was involved in, you know, something sketchy, which is why he's in trouble in this book from the first one. Um, but, you know, I got enough context in this book for it not to matter that I hadn't read it so I was okay with that we didn't get a lot of you know hugely annoying info dumping which was fantastic but we did get enough information to sort of know and understand what had happened in the previous book and I think eventually I probably will pick that up book up as well because it sounds relatively interesting but these two women came from America and our main character in this book is trying to make it in the fashion industry while also giving um especially sort of like underprivileged uh, women in the area a chance to actually make some money and do something really you know with their creativity uh and um stuff like that and so it was really interesting to see the, to see the dynamic because this you know former prince who was trying to regain all of his stuff back um is you know, told that uh, by the courts that he has to help her with her business practices because everything is totally different over there from what she's used to. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I, I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. The unlikable characters had a realistic growth journey and I enjoyed that. I thought that was good. Like, you know, you don't like people because you're supposed to not like people. It's frustrating to watch some of these characters, but it was very well done. And the evolution of the character was really well written and really um uh, well-rounded. And I really appreciated uh, the way that this was woven. Um, it wasn't in such a way where it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm attracted to this person and that's insta, but it's not insta love, it's just insta attraction. That is different and that is something that I can work with. So again, this is a Christian author, so faith and God were woven into this in actually a really nice way. I really appreciated the faith element in here. Um, I thought it was really interesting how that was woven in, but also all of the cultural stuff that was woven into this book so much fun. It was so different from so many books that I read and I absolutely loved it. I adored it. I would recommend it for sure. Really, really liked this book. It was definitely worth the read. We have two books left. As promised, the next Rachel Houck book, which was To Love a Prince. So again, we're in this prince era, you know, we're loving loving prince's era, apparently. Like, I don't know, maybe it's because everybody's dream is like, I'll marry a prince and like whatever, except that I couldn't care less about that. But... <laughs> This book was also very well done. Four stars. We are hitting our marks with these. I'm not going to lie. We're doing quite well. So this story was really cute and I really enjoyed sort of the faith elements. Um, they weren't too overpowering. The relationship, dy relationship dynamics were really great. Um, and there were there was some miscommunication, but it was dealt with so well and so quickly and so satisfying. I was so impressed. If I hate miscommunication because most of the time you miscommunicate, you get so frustrated that you, you basically like abandon the entire person, like throw the person away. I'm like, guys, just actually properly communicate you'll be fine uh, and that's what happened in this book if there was miscommunication it was dealt with properly and quickly and we weren't sitting around seeing stupid choices it was like I think I might have misunderstood so let me face the person and let's actually deal with this props thank you so much because this is what how what, how it should really look when you miscommunicate with each other in real life I liked it it's childhood friends to lovers so so much fun you know what it was just amazing. So essentially the story itself, I'm sorry, I gave you all the elements of what I liked about it and stuff before I told you what the story was about. Childhood friends to lovers. So we had uh, someone who was a commoner um, who was friends with the prince when uh, he was growing up. Uh, and then she was, you know, removed from the palace 
for various reasons that we weren't sure about and we don't know about until we sort of get into the book. Um, but still remembers having fun with this guy and she really liked him. And when they grow up, he has been having a really rough go of it. People have been, because he's the, he's the spare. It sort of almost reminds me of like a Prince Harry story, but if that was actually a positive ending rather than them basically destroying the monarchy. But anywho, um, he was really... Uh, looked down upon by the media. He was really told like he was a bit more on the heavier side and he was really made fun of a lot and it really got under his skin. He was left at the altar a couple of times. And so he ended up hiding away for a year. And then um, the main character in this book, who was the friend, childhood friend, runs into him uh, just as he's about to come back into the public light because his brother, the prince, the heir to the throne is getting married and he wants to be there for him. Um, and so he's about to come into his He's shaped up, he's like, he's looking good, he's feeling good, he's still a little bit reserved about romance and stuff, because he's like, I've been hurt a lot and in public, um, but like, we're good, we're back, we're going to come for it, and it's going to be good, and you know what, That he, he's on this journey of coming back into the public eye, she's on this journey of seeing, can we be friends, um, I have another relationship maybe that I'm like, you know, invested in, what's going to happen, like I have these feelings for this guy since we were kids like what's gonna go on and I actually honestly just really enjoyed this the progression the book itself I thought it was really well done I really really enjoyed it okay oh my goodness okay so the last book that I'm gonna talk about I actually read quite a while ago but I'm counting it in this sort of series because I got a new version and a new copy of the book and it was a five-star book Tokyo Ever After by Amiko Jean I recently got this really beautiful um, copy uh, and uh, so that's why I'm sort of adding this into my pile and my list. I technically had another book on my list of royal romances to read. Um, yeah, just one more. Uh, but I didn't end up wanting to read it and certainly not within the, the time frame when I had been already devouring like several other, uh, <laughs> royal romances and I was sort of getting royal romance out. Um, but I do want to talk about this book because it was so much fun. This is like uh, The Princess Diaries if it was in Japan and to be perfectly honest I preferred this. I <laughs> The movie, The Princess Diaries, is a good one, but the book itself was kind of stupid and boring and I didn't like it. But this book, I'm here for. This story, I'm here for. Again, we get these incredibly beautiful cultural things in here that you just don't experience if you're not familiar with, like, Japanese culture and um, how things work over there. And I really enjoyed that. That was really, really nice. Our main character finds out she's technically a princess. She had no idea. She goes over to Japan to see if she can actually, you know, um become this princess but uh she goes over there finds out that like her bodyguard is pretty cute um but also like you know can she fit into this world what is expected of her is really different than she's used to her mum is you know relatively like free-spirited and this is very very structured and in a completely different way but she also des desperately would like to know her dad uh, and get to know him and experience life with him as well and so I really enjoyed this book the first book was way better than the second and I didn't really enjoy the second book as much at all so I am here for this one um this is where it's at it was very cute very funny very quirky and I absolutely loved this book it was five stars well those are my royal romances that I read just not that long ago actually just at the very sort of end of the year last year but there you are those are the results that's what happened I have to say after reading a bunch of royal romances after a while you kind of get sick of it but to be honest with you I enjoyed them while I was there and most of them were very well written I think the ones that were my favorite that I really enjoyed the most were the ones that threw in completely different different cultural expectations and norms and things that I am not used to and that I don't experience. Those were really fun and I think were really well written and, and just really beautiful to explore different uh, different stuff than you would normally be used to and I really liked that so those were sort of some of my favorite ones I hope you enjoyed this video if you have read some royal romances that you liked let me know in the comments and we'll, you know we can we can look at those but uh, anyways I enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video see you in the adventures bye